Hey there friends, it's Kodiak here. Welcome back to Legacy Gaming and welcome to Elden Ring. Today we're bringing you a boss guide for the Bloodhound Knight, Dari Will. You can access this boss as soon as you enter Limgrave, and you might want to do that as the reward for killing this twisted soldier is quite nice. Top to bottom, the Bloodhound Knight is designed to keep you off balance. His greatest weapon is his speed and the ability at which he can close any gaps and deal significant damage to your character. Equipped with a massive curved sword in his right hand and a hook claw in his left, the knight taps into two distinct attack styles to leave you constantly guessing when and where he's going to attack. Bloodhound Knight also has the ability to teleport or phase shift depending on how you see it, so that's fun. But we'll get to all that, I promise. Like I said, you can access this boss right from the jump. Just head southeast from the first steps until you reach this circular looking structure. To activate the boss, simply stand on the center panel. It takes him a second to activate, but once he does, things move quickly, so be prepared. Right off the bat, the first thing you need to be aware of is his teleport. Often used throughout the fight, the boss will use this ability to close the gap between you and him. This can happen once if the boss is a small distance away, or he can chain two teleports together in relatively quick succession if he's far enough away. This is an ever-present threat throughout the encounter, and as you'll see by the following set of abilities, in conjunction with any of them, it could mean a quick death. Throughout the fight, the Bloodhound Knight makes great use of that massive curved sword or hook blade. Depending on how far away the player is from the boss, he'll either swing once with either his sword or his blades, or in combination of three attacks. It's really the latter you need to watch out for, as this is the most common attack you'll see throughout the entire encounter. The boss will first employ a forehand swing, then follow that up with a backhand swing, and then finally end with a huge chopping attack. Because of the size of the sword, this easily impacts the areas directly in front and to the sides of the boss, depending on the direction of the swing. Another common ability and your best chance to score some DPS is directly after the boss's claw drag uppercut combination. This is a very clearly telegraphed ability as the boss will put his left hand on the ground and wait before charging forward. When he reaches the player, he'll immediately uppercut with his claw and then follow that up with a huge forward slash. The exact same attack happens, but this time the boss will drag his sword and then combo that into an uppercut and slash. Be on the lookout for the subtle variation, identifying which side either sword or claw the boss is dragging on the ground. When right on top of the player, the boss will often use a simple jump slam combination. Because this ability breaks your horizontal plane of vision, it can be a bit off-putting, so be aware any time he's close that it could be coming. After this attack, the boss retreats backwards ever so slightly. There are a few one-off attacks that aren't really challenging but will throw you off rhythm, and that's their intention. The first is a backhand uppercut. The boss will simply swing upwards with his sword, attempting to hit you. In the same vein is a singular overhead chop. This looks similar to the last strike of that three-strike combo, but is isolated to its own attack. Getting back to the more elaborate abilities is a leap-swing combination. Instead of teleporting forward, the boss will leap forward, lifting off the ground, ending with a big forehand slash. Be careful with this move, as it will often lead quickly into another sword-based ability. Finally, we have two retreat-based abilities we need to talk about. The first is a leap-slam combination tied into a retreat. The boss will jump and swing his sword wildly, then immediately after, spin backwards, creating distance from the player. Almost identical in nature is a double-slash mechanic that dovetails into a retreat. This looks a bit like the leap mechanic from earlier, but has a bit more flash to it, making it just as deadly, if not more so. As you can see, the Bloodhound Knight has a number of abilities, all deadly, but most are predictable. This is truly a fight where getting greedy will kill you almost every time. Your best opening is during his Claw Drag Uppercut combination. Right after this attack is a great window where you can land one or two shots in, depending on how fast your attacks are. Roll in towards the boss to hopefully avoid any additional running when the window is open. Of course, you can score a hit or two outside this window, but do that at your own risk. Because of Dariwill's ability to retreat, you could also make good use of any ranged abilities, whether they be magical or otherwise. You don't have long to land these attacks from any distance because, again, teleport, but it is an opening that's present frequently throughout the fight. The most deadly attack in the entire encounter is that three-swing combination. It's got a unique cadence, but it's a core mechanic in the entire fight, which makes it pivotal to understand and internalize. Once you really wrap your head around that attack, figuring out the dodge window, you'll be in a great place as the rest of the attacks are far more methodical and predictable. With a little patience, some internalization of key mechanics, and a bit of persistence, the Bloodhound Knight Dariwill will fall, and his loot will be yours to claim. In terms of loot, well, that awesome sword the boss uses to cut you down is the very weapon you get to claim once you defeat the Bloodhound Knight. 
Bloodhound's Fang is a curved greatsword that is a great early weapon you can add to your arsenal. It sports high physical attack power, decent crit, and has the added passive benefit of blood loss buildup, essentially a bleed effect that you can apply to enemies after a certain number of hits. If you're a fan of big beefy weapons, this is a great early choice, and since the boss isn't too terribly hard, it might be worth picking up. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of how to defeat the Blood Knight Dariwell. As always, our goal here at Legacy Gaming is to bring you guides that get straight to the point so you can get back to the action. And if you appreciate that, we'd appreciate your support. Hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing for more Elden Ring boss guides and more in your feeds. Of course, if you still have questions, you can join us on Discord. Our community just passed 20,000 members, and with a small section dedicated just for Elden Ring, there's always someone around to help out and answer questions. Check out the link below to join today. Finally, if you like everything we're doing here on the channel and you want to support us even more, you can do so by becoming a member. For just a couple bucks, you're helping Livid and I achieve our dreams of becoming full-time content creators. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.